Hey everybody, it's Reagan Sample, your Longmont Realtor, and today I'm with Tim Waters, who's running for Mayor of Longmont. So I've offered all the candidates who are running for Mayor for City Council a chance to come and talk to us, let the residents know in Longmont why they're running and know more about them. So uh, I'm going to time everybody for 10 minutes, and we're just going to go ahead and get started. So thanks for taking the time to talk to us today, and I guess just tell us. Tell us more about you and why you're running. Well, first of all, Reagan, let me thank you for um, you committing the time that, that's required to do this as, yeah, a, sure. as a contribution to the community. Uh, there just aren't many opportunities, really, for people to get to know who the candidates are, and, and this is a pretty cool way to do it. So, as a volunteer, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, you bet. Um, and I'm running, I'm running for mayor for many of the same reasons I ran for city council uh, three and a half years ago. I, I serve on city council. I represent Ward 1. I made that decision then because I thought... I had something to contribute, I had something to offer. I've spent a, my entire adult life, I've been in kind of a service profession as an educator. Uh, I've been in, in a lot of leadership roles, uh, and I just had a chance to bring some of that home to Longmont. Right now, um, we, I thought, we all thought, I think a few months ago, that we might be really moving out of the pandemic era, right, into a post-pandemic era, sure. whatever that's going to, whatever the new normal is going to be. Um, uh, we're, we're not quite there yet with what's going on with, you know, uh, COVID-19, Delta, and then Lambda, you know, and the, and the variants or mutations. Sure. But I'm optimistic that we, we will soon be, with all deliberate speed, I hope, moving out of the pandemic era. And I do believe that the quality of elected leadership in municipalities and the kind of uh, leadership that people like mayors bring to the initiatives that will get communities moving forward in the post-pandemic era in the name of recovery, both the pace and the pro productivity or success of recovery, is going to, to some degree, not totally, but to some degree, depend on the quality of elected leadership. And frankly, I think experience is going to matter, both as a council member and a lifetime of leadership in other roles that I have a chance to bring to this. And I. I'd like to be part of, I think, be the, the point, along with city staff and other council members, of making certain that we, do, we get out of whatever cul-de-sacs communities might find, them in, find themselves in with a real vision for where we want to be and who we want to be in the post-pandemic era. Cool. And, you know, the next question I was going to have, you kind of alluded to it maybe a little bit, talking about coming out of the pandemic, but what do you see uh, are some of the biggest challenges or issues that are facing Longmont? Yeah. <clears throat> for whatever it's worth. Um, and I, I, there's a libel website, the Tim Waters for Mayor, uh, and on that website, um, there's a drop, drop down issues, you know, a menu. Uh, I've, I've organized what I think to be priority uh, opportunities and concerns under two big organizing themes. One is recovery from the pandemic. The other is reducing our carbon footprint. And it's not like those are all the issues that we're dealing with. That, that show up under those two headings or in those two themes. There's a bunch of other stuff we're working sure. on. And I would say from the outset that I, I think it's the responsibility of elected leaders and city staff members to have one eye on day-to-day, -day, you know, the routines that have to be executed well. If we get the little things right, a lot of the big things take care of themselves. So whether it's trash, trash collection or snow removal or uh, dealing with our homeless population, the things that we deal with day in and day out, we have to be focused on those. We also have to have one eye. This is what leaders do. They have an eye on the future as well. And for me, um, under the heading of recovery, if we, don't, if we don't get smarter and more effective with what we do with the housing inventory and who we work with and how we finance to deliver housing, market rate housing for working families in Longmont in close proximity to where they work, right? If the degree that we're able to do that will reduce traffic and reduce our carbon footprint, right? And improve, uh, uh, lend itself to quality uh, of life, right? In terms of work-life balance. Sure. Uh, to recover from this pandemic, if we don't do more and better with childcare, uh, we have a whole segment of our workforce, moms and a lot of dads, who are never going to get back into the workplace. It was a challenge before the pandemic. It is a much more significant challenge coming out of the pandemic. We have, we have done a pretty good job uh, of developing this community 
with proposals from developers um, reflecting their vision for what they want to develop, but also kind of complying with zoning uh, limitations and requirements and our ordinances around development. Um, I would, for me, that's kind of compliance-based approach. Um, uh, I would like us to be more visionary and have a more visionary-based approach uh, to planning uh, and then developing uh, ourselves into the future. So uh, right now, coming out of this pandemic, we did some pretty good work, and I, and I had a good fortune of taking the lead on a visioning process that, that has now been referred to as the STEAM initiative, building STEAM. Uh, it's time for us to go full steam ahead, right, in the yeah. next phase of this. Sure. So we developed a pretty robust vision for uh, what's possible between, in terms of land use, between Martin Street and Main Street, north of Boston, right, that stretch of land, north of Dickens Park. Uh, what, what, what a group envisioned for that area isn't the only vision or the only set of possibilities. It's, it's a collection of ideas, and it re reflects the input of a lot of people. I had a chance to help design and facilitate that with the city manager. Going, going west, right, west of Main Street, all the way out to the airport, we've got, I think, 800 acres at least of land that over the next 24 months or so will come out of a floodplain. And I think people are going to be anxious, the owners of that property will be anxious to develop it in some way, right, whether it's housing or... or so the vision for how we do that the, number one, protects our natural amenity of the river. I'm not talking about repeating mistakes we've made in the past in terms of squandering our, our natural amenity. But I am saying we ought to have a really clear vision of what the, what's possible, looking west all the way to the airport and beyond. Um, I guess the last part of that, and talk back to challenges, is, is developing an airport in ways that quiet our skies. I'm not talking about bringing in you know, more noise. But I do think we, we're missing an opportunity to develop our airport based on everything I see happening with investments in electrified aviation for research, development, and manufacturing. And, and Longmont has the potential to be kind of the western state's hub, center, vanguard of research, development, and manufacturing of quiet, green, electrified, electrified aviation, really taking advantage of the avionics program, the innovation center, the Front Range Community College, et cetera. Or we can watch other communities do that. And I believe if we do that, then the airport is part of a regional transportation solution, which is another one of our big challenges, is to figure out what's that, what kind of rail or you know, uh, mass or semi-mass transit options sure. we ought to be pursuing. But I think the airport ought to be part of that solution. So that's a bunch of them. I could spend more time talking about carbon footprints and, and the recommendations from our Climate Action Task Force and solid waste diversion and working with PRPA to make certain we meet our 100% renewable energy goal by, by 2030. But these all kind of fit together, right, in a, in a program of work or a body of work. Sure. So it sounds like those are smaller pieces under those big issues that yeah. you were talking about. So, uh, so if elected, you become the next mayor, what can the people in Longmont expect from you as the next mayor if elected? Uh, well, I'd like to think, um, in spite of, of how many words I just spoke, I'd like to think that I listen well, uh, and I and I I learn a lot as I listen. So um, I think people who have worked with me would say he is a listener. Um, he also takes what he learns and synthesizes that into a, his own set of conclusions. Um, so I think what Longmonters would get from me, number one, is a listener. But beyond that, uh, Longmonters would get clarity on where I stand on the issues, and I have never approach decision making or you know thinking about positions I would take uh, based on where I want to sit at the table or you know who's going to favor what I what I think people are going to hear what I think based on what I've how I've synthesized what I've learned so they're going to get clarity on where I stand transparency both on how I arrive at a conclusion and virtually everything else I do right um, there is there is nothing that I've done as a public official or as a private citizen that isn't subject to scrutiny. And the last part of that is the accountability that goes with that scrutiny. Uh, I've, said to the, I've said to the public, uh, I'll say it again, that I'm accountable for every public or private utterance that I make, every decision I make, my behavior public and private, and I have, uh, I've been trying to be as much of an open book as I possibly can. So hey, that's what you, you get. So we've got just about 30 seconds left before we run out of time here. 
Uh, so, so I would say just what is it you love most about Longmont? Why go through all this? You know, well, you wouldn't do this if you didn't love Longmont. Uh, love, love, we are already, uh, I think, the jewel of the front range. But we have the potential now, coming out of this, uh, to define a, a future for our kids, your kids, your grandchildren, my granddaughters and others, um, for the next hundred years. Hey, there you go. So uh, that, that's our time right there. And let me turn that off. So I want to thank you again. If we can figure out how to get that thing shut down. <laughs> that's what you get when your kids get on your iPhone and change the settings. So thanks again for taking time to talk to us. Tim Waters, running for mayor. Uh, take a chance to, to learn more about him on his website. Learn more about all the candidates and go to the City of Longmont's website. Uh, but importantly, it's important to be informed and know what's going on. And that's why I'm glad that have, you took the time to do this because I know that uh, this information, a lot of people don't know much about these candidates. So get informed. Make sure you register to vote. Election day is Tuesday, November the 2nd. And thanks again. Ballots, ballots are delivered, I think, October 11th. Okay, so mid-October is going to be in your mailbox. So take some time to learn out there. Be informed. Make a decision. Let your voice be heard long months. So. Thanks, Reagan. Thanks again. Appreciate it.